Hi everyone, welcome back to science. I'm Miss Catherine. Let's get started with lesson 3.2 in our matter and energy in ecosystems unit. In addition to our typical materials today, um, if you have available to you a large sheet of paper and 30 small little game token type items. Um, it would be great if you had those in front of you as we're gonna play um, a little bit of a game today. Um, and that large sheet of paper can be used for you to make a game board for yourself at home. And those 30 small objects or tokens can be used for you to move around the objects on that game board that you make for yourself at home. Um, and what I mean by a game token is just any small object really that you can move around. They don't have to be 30 of the same thing. Um, you could have a couple of um, dice, for example, and then a couple of Monopoly houses and some other like sorry game board token. Um, it really doesn't matter what they are. They also could just be tiny little strips of paper or little pieces of paper that you use as well um, so that you can move them around and track carbon today as we play a game that involves carbon in an ecosystem. Um, if you don't have any of those things, that's okay. I'm gonna play the game um, on my screen and you can follow along with me as I do that. One thing you will not see on our list today that you will not need is access to Amplify online. So even if you are able to get into Amplify, um, don't worry about doing so today as everything that we're going to do uh, will be centered around the game and that piece of paper that you already have. So um, here is your heading for your paper for today. I did put the click path up here just so you know where you are. Um, but again, I won't be having you go into Amplify Online today to do any of those things. We are going to, again today, consider this investigation question that we started last lesson in 3.1. And that is if the amount of carbon changed in one part of a closed ecosystem, what happened to the carbon in the rest of the ecosystem? And last time we began considering this question in the context of a reading um, titled Carbon in the Global Ecosystem. And through that reading, one thing that we uh, learned that was new to us is that carbon uh, moves and cycles around an ecosystem, kind of like water moves and cycles around an ecosystem as well. We know that water can evaporate um, and go from the Earth's surface into Earth's atmosphere. We then know that water in the atmosphere can change from a gas to a liquid um, and then rain back down to the surface again through precipitation. Um, and we made a connection to this carbon cycle as something similar where carbon can move around between both the abiotic and the biotic parts of an ecosystem. And the article informed us that human activities like the burning of fossil fuels for energy um, is a way that humans have changed the way this carbon cycle naturally occurs on Earth's surface. And one of the um, annotations that we made in our reading last time focused on this idea that Earth is a closed system um, because things or matter or stuff isn't leaving um, Earth and going out into space and things from space aren't really coming into Earth either. Um, so the amount of matter, the amount of stuff is, is remaining the same, which is why we consider Earth a closed system. And remember, our biodome is also a closed system uh, because what is in there stays in there. And this article reminded us that carbon isn't being produced or it's not being um, used up. The total amount is not changing. So if it's increasing in one part of the system, it must be also decreasing somewhere else. So for our warm up uh, thinking question here today, I'd like you to pause the video and I'd like you to reflect on our investigation question and answer that question um, as best as you can at this point. So if the amount of carbon changed in one part of a closed ecosystem, according to the article, what happened to the carbon in the rest of the ecosystem? 